Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about the human ear. Now, the ear, human ear is associated with two major functions. One of them is, of course, you know, hearing. And the second one is body balance. It is very important function. Okay. So, let's uh, now talk about the anatomical part. The ear is divided majorly into three parts. Okay. The outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. Now, I am going to draw a short diagram which will help you understand these. Okay. Now, so initially we say from here to here this is the external ear. I, I'll mark the landmarks and from here to here is the middle ear and the rest one is the inner ear. Now let's start from the external ear. Okay. This, this is the this entire outer ear, outer part of the external ear is called the pinna. What is its function? It's ca it catches the sound waves. Okay. The sound waves are coming and it catches and it directs it towards the ear cavity. Next, what we have is this part, this entire tube, tube tubular structure. This is the external auditory canal. Okay, it passes or uh, through it the sound waves pass and hit the tympanic membrane. For sure, this is the tympanic membrane or the eardrum or the tympanum. Okay, the sound waves collected by the pinna move through the external uh, auditory canal and hit the tympanic membrane. This creates a vibration in the tympanic membrane. This vibration in the tympanic membrane is further transferred to these green colored structures known as the ear ossicles. These are bones. These are bones. Now, what are those called? The first one is called malleus. The second one is called incus. And the third one is called stapes. Mind it, this is the smallest bone in the human body. Stapes is the smallest bone in the human body. Okay, now this malleus is hammer shaped, this incus is anvil shaped, and this stapes is stirrup shaped. So, this is a picture showing the uh, three ear ossicles that is the malleus, incus, and stapes and their respective joints. They are used for the amplification of the sound waves. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the this is contained in the middle ear cavity. Alright. Now, this red colored tube, this red colored tube, this is the estrogen tube. Okay, this is the estrogen tube. Now, what is its function? It connects the middle ear cavity with the throat. It connects the middle ear cavity with the throat. Why? Why do we need to connect it? Because if the sound waves come from this side and hit the tympanic membrane, okay, with high pressure, it creates a, the a tympanic membrane bulges inside towards the middle ear cavity. Okay, now there is a chance that the tympanic membrane may burst when a high pressurized, high pressure sound wave comes. Okay, now this, when it is connected to the throat, the throat also has air pressure. Okay, so throat will control and transmit air pressure to the middle ear cavity and equalize the pressure on both the sides so as to prevent the tympanic membrane from rupturing. Okay, it's a preventive measure, right? So, because uh, you may have noticed when you uh, when you uh, 
go in a flight okay or when you go in a high altitude in the mountains the atmosphere gets rarefied less dense so air pressure outside or the sound pressure outside decreases okay so, and the pressure from the throat is constant so the eardrum tends to bulge outwards so you may feel something some uneasiness in your ear right so it is due to the pressure unequal pressure the throat gives more pressure and the external atmosphere the pressure is decreased okay after us after some amount of time it gets normalized okay now this inner ear is connected to the i mean the middle ear is connected to the inner ear using there are two connections one of them is the round window which is just over here this is the round window round window okay and the one which is above that is the oval window right oval window now this uh, the sound wave when is transmitted to the ear ossicles these are, these are known as the ear ossicles okay this ear ossicles transmit the sound wave from the middle ear cavity to the inner ear cavity through this oval window okay this oval window is covered by a membrane this round window is as well covered by a membrane so the function of oval window is to transmit the sound from middle ear uh, more specifically the ear ossicles to the cochlea then what is the function of round window you know uh, we'll talk about it when we talk about the structure of this structure that is the cochlea okay now let's come to the inner ear in inner ear we have a structure known as this coiled structure snail like structure called as cochlea okay and um, above the cochlea connected to the cochlea we have these three semicircular shaped canals so they are known as semicircular canals and the semicircular canal is connected to a stalk which is further connected to the stalklea so this part so this part okay this part contains two structures which is not visible right now but it contains two structures known as a saccule and utricule we'll talk about it in detail later on okay so this is all about the structure of the human ear from the pinna to the tympanic membrane is the external ear from the tympanic membrane to the oval and the round window along with the eustachian tube this is the middle ear and the entire cochlea is the present in the inner ear okay this inner ear is contained in a bone this side the bone present laterally in our skull that is a temporal bone this is present in the temporal bone cavity okay and this what is this green structure we are seeing this is the vestibulo cochlear or auditory nerve auditory nerve all right now that's all about the anatomy okay and another part this you may have heard about ear wax right so this uh, external auditory canal has some glands in its way okay some modified sebaceous glands called the ceruminous gland ceruminous glands these glands secrete cerumen or ear wax okay ear wax it's not not normal now okay now let's talk about the cochlea okay this cochlea now cochlea what is cochlea cochlea is a tubular structure okay it's a tube just like this this is coiled this is coiled to form cochlea several coil i cannot show it right here but it's several coil to form cochlea what we are doing how will how will i draw a diagram now i am opening this coil and cutting this cutting this cross section okay and i am going to show you the cross section okay so this is the diagram of the cross section of the cochlea the opened cochlea okay now this is what is called as this layer the above the uh, layer present on the top okay there are 
three cavities. All right, there are three cavities. The upper one is known as scala vestibuli or the vestibular canal. There are three canals: the upper one, the scala vestibuli, or the vestibular canal. Now the lower one is called scala tympani, scala tympani, or the tympanic canal. The middle one is called that called scala media or the median canal. Okay. Now this membrane, this base of the scala vestibuli is known as Reisner's membrane. Reisner's membrane and the top membrane, the above membrane, above the scala tympani is known as basilar membrane. All right. Now, and this this umbrella-like structure present here. Okay, this umbrella-like structure present here, present all throughout the canal actually. In the middle layer, this is known as the tectorial membrane. Tectorial membrane. All right. Now, the on the basilar membrane we have some something known as organ of corti. This entire thing is known as organ of corti. This organ of corti contains some this red colored which I have done in, shown in red color. These are the hair cells. These hair cells have some stereocilia, okay, hair like structures on them, these stereocilia and the tectorial membrane is just above the stereocilia. These are stereocilia and the tectorial membrane just above like this, okay. Scala vestibuli and scala tympani contain a fluid. These are fluid filled cavities. These, they contain fluid known as in, uh, perilymph, I'm sorry, perilymph. Whereas this Scala media contains a fluid known as the perilymph. Uh, I mean the endolymph. Okay. Endolymph. Now, the round window is connected to the scala vestibuli, and uh, uh, the oval window is connected to the scala vestibuli, and the round window is connected to the scala tympani. Okay. We will show it in another diagram in a better way. The round, the uh, Vibration from the air ossicles come and uh, hit the oval window and this oval window vibration is further transferred to the scala vestibuli. This scala vestibuli and scala tympani is again connected using a structure known as uh, foramen known as helicotrema. We will show it in the next diagram. So vibration from scala vestibuli, the perilymph in the scala vestibuli gets transferred and comes to scala tympani perilymph. This scala tympani perilymph again vibrates this basilar membrane. On upon which the organ of corti is situated. Okay, and this uh, sets the scala media uh, endolymph in the scala media into vibration. Okay, now the tectorial membrane now vibrates. Okay, the tectorial membrane starts vibrating and starts touching the stereocilia and give impulses, generate impulses. These impulses now are carried through this green colored nerve known as the cochlear nerve and transferred to the brain. This is how impulse uh, auditory impulses are generated okay that's all about this cross section diagram now we'll talk about what i told us helicotrema and a better diagram of cochlea another view okay so this is the entire tube of the cochlea opened up tube okay now this is what this is the top topmost canal known as scala vestibuli this is the bottom one scala Tympani and this middle one is the scala media. This is filled with perilymph, this is filled with perilymph, this is filled with endolymph. Now, this perilymph here comes in the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani are connected here at the end of the tube through this through this part which is known as helicotrema. Okay, and this is the step is the last air ossicle and this is the oval window this is the round window right and this is to the vestibular system the cochlea as i told in the first diagram the cochlea is connected to the vestibular system which consists of the 
semicircular canal, saccular neutricle. Okay, this this connected to the vestibular system above through this part. That is not we are not concerned about this in this diagram. Okay, now the uh, sound waves come to the ear ossicle, the last ear ossicle, and it sets the whole window into vibration. And this whole window now starts vibrating, and this uh, transfer the vibration throughout the perilymph, and it finally comes here and starts vibrating the uh, basilar membrane and the uh, perilymph. Okay. Now the tectorial membrane comes in contact with the organ of cotti and impulse is generated. So that's all about the cochlea. This is all about the uh, generation of the auditory impulse, hearing part. Now you are going to the balance, body balance part. Okay. The body balance as the uh, hearing part is concerned with cochlea, the body balance is concerned with something known as the vestibular apparatus. Okay. The vestibular apparatus which lies connected which is connected to the cochlea just above it lies above the cochlea this vestibular apparatus consists of semi circular canals and <clears throat> the otolith organ something known as otolith organ this otolith organ consists of saccule and utricule Okay, I referred to all of these in the first diagram. The semicircular canals is associated with dynamic balance. Means when we are in motion, that balance, the body when it, we, when it is in motion, that balance is controlled by the semicircular canals. And the otolith organ is concerned with static balance, both the saccular and the utricular. That is when we are standing or sitting. We are in a static position. That balance is controlled by the otolith organ. Semicircular canals, how they are oriented? They are semicircular shaped canals. There are three canals. Okay. They are, we know in 3D, we have three axes X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Let me draw it. Okay. This is the x-axis, okay, consider this, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is the z-axis, okay, this is the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis in 3D. These semicircular canals are so arranged that they both, all the three are at 90 degrees to each other. So how will they be arranged? The one of the canal is arranged along the z-axis, one of them is arranged along the y-axis and one of them is arranged along the X axis. This is how the semicircular canals are arranged. Okay. And the drawing of the semicircular canals is done in the first diagram. Please refer to that. And the saccule and utricle, you know, the semicircular canals, they are connected to the cochlea. This part is the cochlea. Okay. And this in the middle of them, this stalk has the otolith organ. Okay. This stalk has the otolith organ. This consists of the saccule and utricle which are responsible for static balance both are control both are having same sensory organs like that of the organ of cotta in case of cochlea okay they also have sensory cells the sensory cells uh, in case of semicircular canals okay we have uh, swelling at the base called ampulla okay and that ampulla contains that ampulla ampulla contains crista Ampullaris. Crista ampullaris, which has hair cells. Okay. And in the saccular neutricule, we have something known as macula. Macula, which contains the hair cells. Okay. This is for static balance. This is for dynamic balance. That's all about the balance portion. Now, what is important to know is the difference between bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth okay bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth bony labyrinth bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth 
bony labyrinth consists of the semicircular canals and the cochlea what is it bony labyrinth bony means bony okay you know the uh, inner ear is contained in the temporal bone okay so the temporal it is contained in the temporal bone it is a bony cavity the outer covering of the semicircular canals and the cochle cochlea are bony okay the scala tympani and the scala vestibuli of the cochlea both outer coverings are bony and the, in the middle of them okay the scala media that is contained that is an entire tube which continues above as the tubes of the semicircular canals as well okay so outer covering of the semicircular canals and the cochlea they are bony and so they are called bony labyrinth okay and what are what present in the membranous labyrinth the semicircular ducts and the cochlear cochlear ducts cochlear duct means this is the scala media okay the tube contained within all right and also the saccule and the utricle of course saccule and the utricle so this membranous labyrinth the semicircular ducts the cochlear duct and the saccule and the utricle they are contained within the bony cavity known as the bony labyrinth the semicircular ducts are ducts inside the semicircular canals okay in which there is fluid and the cochlear duct is inside the cochlea and the saccule and the utricle is in between those two the bony cavity between those two okay so in this picture we can see that there is the blue color outer covering of the cochlea and the semicircular canals which represent the bony labyrinth and inside of which we can see orange colored semicircular ducts along with the saccule and the utricle and which continues as the cochlear duct or the scala media okay so that represents the uh, membranous labyrinth which is shown here in orange color that's all about the human ear now at last just let's talk about the pathway of the uh, sound waves okay firstly what we'll have the sound waves will be connected by the pinna sound waves will be connected by the pinna then it moves into the external auditory canal then it strikes the tympanic membrane then sets the ear ossicles into vibration means first of all it will strike malleus then incus then stapes then stapes will set the oval window into vibration okay now oval window will ultimately set the tectorial membrane of the scala media and the uh, the basilar membrane into vibration okay this will generate nerve impulse as the hair cells the stereocilia of the hair cells touch the tectorial membrane and it will generate nerve impulse which will be transferred into the, uh, taken to the brain using the auditory nerve uh, actually the cochlear nerve okay and let me tell you the function of round window okay function of round window as i had told in that figure okay this was what the scala this is a cochlea okay this is scala vestibuli scala tympani and scala media now when the ear ossicle here contains uh, brings sound waves and it strikes the oval window the oval window bulges inside okay so the fluid inside sets into vibration but as it bulges inside there has to be some space created right otherwise the this will burst right so oval window bulges bulges inside and in turn that space of the fluid which is the space which is uh, the bulge space of the oval window is created by bulging out the round window it is also membranous that is also membranous so oval window bulges inside and in turn round window bulges outside to create space for the extra bulging okay that is the function of round window it helps this not to burst and to and for the proper uh, transmission of the sound waves that is all about the function of the round window okay so that's all about and just remember one thing that humans can hear uh, sounds at a frequency range of 20 to 20000 hertz frequency range okay 
and it is more of a theory theoretical a theoretical aspect but uh, <coughs> the most pleasant sound is heard means most distinctly it is heard between 1000 to 4000 hertz okay the most distinct clear sound is heard between 1000 to 4000 hertz so that's all about the human ear okay yeah we are finished so thank you guys uh, if you like the video please hit the like button uh, subscribe to my channel and please do share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next video thank you